The purpose of this video is to go over the template or the example of an inf informed consent form. There's another video that goes over the instructions. Um, but so we start off here with a study title. And in this case, it's substance use in upper class neighborhoods. Um, and so you put your name, a Millersville social work student, and there's a little bit of an intro here about the study. Um, you do the study overview, which will include the purpose statement. And again, uh, we spent a week on the purpose statement in the class, and you can look at those videos and go back and, and look at how to write a purpose statement. And so that's what goes here. Um, they also mention what measurement tool they're using uh, to uh, assess people. They have a paragraph on risks and benefit. And if you also notice the formatting of this document, I like this formatting. You see the header there is underlined with a colon. Makes it very clear what we're talking about. So risks and benefits, managing discomfort. So let's say, for example, we're interviewing, and in this case, substance use. Let's say we're assessing someone's alcohol use. Well, let's say as they're answering the questions, they realize they have an alcohol problem. And now they're so depressed and so distraught and um, they've already had so many life issues and now they feel like they're going to hurt themselves because of it. And so you are required in the informed consent to say, this is how we're going to manage your discomfort. And that's sort of the term that people use to describe when that kind of thing happens, particularly if you are studying sort of a, a difficult topic like depression or something. It's, it's likely that people might feel suicidal. And if they die by suicide and your you know informed consent was the last thing that they saw but you did not provide this information like a suicide hotline you are liable for their death so that's why it's really important that we provide the appropriate numbers and in this case because we're talking about substance use we probably should include like the number for AA or a hotline or a helpline for people who have substance use disorder. So that is appropriate. So that's a number that's missing um, here. Also, compensation, refusal, and ref um, withdrawal. So if somebody, um, are you going to provide any compensation to these folks? Are you going to pay them $10? Or are you going to give them food in order for them to participate in the study? The other thing, too, is they need to know that they can um, refuse or withdraw from the study at any point. So there really should be another sentence here that says, you may withdraw from the study at any point with no consequences. Um, again, we must make it very clear that this is voluntary. They can quit at any time. Uh, we need to make a choice. Is their information confidential or anonymous? There is a difference. Know the difference and, and write it out. Um, the other thing, too, is um, more information. If you want more information um, about the study, who do you contact? And so in this case, it would be uh, your name or the faculty mentor, whoever the professor is for your class. Um, the responsible parties always include um, the principal investigator or the PI, and that's you, the student researcher, the faculty mentor, and we should also include um, the Millersville IRB here. Um, and you want to include who is in charge of the IRB. So you need to figure out who is in charge of the IRB board through Millersville. Um, and that's who we would also include on this form. And then in this case, this person wanted to study um, minors. They wanted to work with minors. So you have to have the child sign and the parent. But if you are studying adults, uh, then you don't need to get the parent to sign. So that is an example of what an informed consent looks like, or you could use this as a template. There are a few other things that you need to add to it, um, but this just kind of gets you started.